Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Brianna Jarnigan. I work in ALA's Office for Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services. So thanks all for being here. Um, we're really excited to help coordinate this um, webinar and to have Dana Hintz and David Kelsey as our presenters today. So t just to introduce um, them, David Kelsey is the manager of the Outreach Services Department at St. Charles Public Library in Illinois and is the 2018 to 2019 treasurer for AVOS. David was a 2017 ALA Emerging Leader and was recently published in the March-April 2017 edition of Public Libraries with the article, The Power of Community Outreach, Meeting the Demands of, a growing, of the Growing Senior Population. David's department is the recipient of a 2017 Outreach Award sponsored by the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. He received his MLIS from the University of Rhode Island. And our other presenter today is Dana Hintz. Uh, she is an Outreach Services Assistant for the St. Charles Public Library in Illinois, where she has expanded and strengthened services and programming to senior facilities in the community. Dana has launched numerous strategic community partnerships, including with Northwestern Medicine and Salvation Army. She will be presenting at the Illinois Library Association's 2018 Reaching Forward Conference in May. We're really excited to have them here today. Um, and just so everyone knows, after their presentation, we'll have some time for Q&A and those questions you can submit in the chat box um, so that everyone can see them. And we'll moderate those um, towards the end of the session. So um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Dana and David um, and we uh, can go ahead and get started. Well, thank you so much, Brianna, for having us here today. Um, and again, again, um, welcome to Grab and Go, Expanding and Strengthening Senior Programming. Uh, my name is David Kelsey. And I'm Dana Hintz. And of course, we're excited to be here today to share with you some of the programs that we present at senior facilities in our community as well as at our library. And a little bit about the St. Charles Public Library. The St. Charles Public Library is located in St. Charles, Illinois which is 35 miles west of the city of Chicago. The library serves a population of 55,000 residents, 53% of whom hold library cards. We are originally a Carnegie Library and have had three editions in recent years. And a little bit about our Outreach Services Department. The Outreach Services Department of the St. Charles Public Library consists of me, David Kelsey, Manager of Outreach Services, and three Outreach Services Assistants, Dana Hintz, Linda Sprainer, and Christine Steck. Together, we provide library materials, programming, and engagement activities to nine senior facilities, three home care facilities, and 15 homebound patrons a month. The Outreach Team also facilitates 15 community book and magazine exchanges including at our local hospital, homeless shelter, judicial center, Salvation Army, and clinics to provide free counseling, medical, and dental services to individuals living below the poverty line. The senior population continues to grow in the United States, with the Administration on Aging projecting that by 2030, there will be 72.1 million people aged 65 or older living in the United States, twice the number in 2000. It is predicted that by 2050, over 83.7 million people aged 65 and older will live in the U.S. As the senior population continues to rise in the United States, so does the number of individuals living with Alzheimer's disease. As the number of seniors living in the United States continues to grow, including those diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, libraries need to ask themselves the following questions. One, how does this growing demographic affect my library and community? Two, what library services can we provide to target this population? And three, what community organizations can we partner with to better serve patrons living with Alzheimer's disease? And now Dana will be talking a little bit more about our senior programming at the St. Charles Public Library. Outreach Services provides programming externally to seven senior facilities, and we provide internal programming as well. 
Programs are weekly, biweekly, and monthly, depending on the facility served. Overall, we present 20 programs a month and reach over 250 seniors. On an annual basis, for example, in the 2016-2017 fiscal year, we presented 174 programs that reached 1,899 seniors. In the past, the model of outreach services was to deliver only books to patrons in our senior facilities, regardless of if it were independent living, assisted living, skilled care, or memory care. If we did not reach a patron with a book, we did not reach them at all. What we found, especially in our memory care facilities, was that some individuals are no longer enjoying reading on a regular basis due to vision or cognitive issues. We were looking for another way to have a positive impact on these individuals as the service model of solely delivering books was becoming irrelevant in certain instances. Therefore, outreach services quickly took measures to change the book delivery model to one which was more focused on education and engagement. We started by bringing coffee table books, which encouraged discussion. We quickly found residents really enjoyed the small group atmosphere with unstructured conversations while looking at pictures, whether it was of old movie stars or places around the world. We then attended the ABOS conference in St. Charles and learned of Tales and Travel, which David will discuss later, and we grew from there. We began to advocate for programming services with our partner facilities we worked with who loved the idea of us providing this type of educational and engaging resource for their residents. Components of senior programming. Outreach Services strives to incorporate all five senses when feasible. For example, sight with materials, images and pictures, sound through music and voices, touch with the use of various props, smell through the use of spices, and at times even taste for special programs that have snacks. If we do bring a food item, we first coordinate with facility staff regarding their policies and restrictions. In addition, we even add some entertainment and we'll even wear costumes at times. As far as technology, outreach services will often coordinate that into our programs. We bring a laptop, a large screen, and a projector to supplement program content. For example, in one of our education and engagement kits, which focuses on music stars, we discuss the history of the Rat Pack. And then I will show a nostalgic YouTube clip of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. all singing together at the legendary Sands Hotel in Las Vegas. And next, we're talking about some of the programming that we provide at our senior facilities. And the first types of programs we're talking about are programs that we bring to facilities for our patrons with dementia. Outreach Services decided to launch senior programming following the 2015 Association of Book and Outreach Services Conference in St. Charles. We were inspired by Mary Beth Reidner, guest speaker and creator of the Tales and Travel Memories program. Mary Beth is the founder and past chair of the Alzheimer's and Related Dementia Interest Group, or IGARD. Tales and Travel was the first program we offered to facilities. We started presenting Tales and Travel at three memory facilities in November 2015, and it has now expanded into presenting at six facilities. Outreach Services presents the program four times each year in September, November, March, and May. Outreach develops large type educational booklets for our Tales and Travel programs. Booklets for all of our programs are one-sided in 16-point veranda font, which allow seniors to easily read the information. Our Tales and Travel booklets contain facts about the country, information about popular sites, and folklore on the country. Outreach incorporates ethnic spices, cultural music, fun character voices, and a world globe into our Tales and Travel programs. 
for our Tales and Travel Germany program that we presented in September, we featured such spices as caraway seeds, bay leaves, and dill, which are all used in traditional German cooking. The spices go into small containers that we hope for our residents to smell. Patrons love my high squeaky voices that I use during folklore readings, and I get to use my acting and theater skills while presenting. We recently updated our world globe to an inflatable one. This enables patrons to hold and interact with the globe during presentations. Outreach staff members pass out children's books, pictures, and souvenirs on each country during Tales and Travel program. We spend time engaging with patrons, looking at books and souvenirs together, and asking if they have visited the country before. A story that displays the positive effect that Tales and Travel has on those living with memory loss was when Outreach Services was presenting a Tales and Travel program on Japan at a care center this past November. While we were passing out a traditional Japanese fan to the residents that they could hold and examine, a Japanese woman who is normally disengaged demonstrated to all of the residents how to properly hold and wave the fan. Stories like this illustrate why we do our job in Outreach Services. Outreach Services created eight educational and engagement kits which are used by staff to engage patrons and were specifically developed to assist in memory. These eight sets were developed around specific themes, movie stars, TV stars, music stars, comedians, cooking, the holidays, country music stars, and Western TV shows. Each contains an informational booklet with facts, background history, and photos, along with small objects that patrons may hold and examine. For example, Remembering Movie Stars features movie stars from the 1930s, 1940s, and 1950s, such as Marilyn Monroe and John Wayne. The objects in this kit are an Oscar statue, ruby slippers, pink opera gloves, and a fedora hat. Our Remembering Comedians kit features comedians from the 1930s to the 1960s, including Phyllis Diller, Joan Rivers, and Edgar Bergen. The kit contains funny glasses, clown noses, a bicycle horn, and a ventriloquist dummy. Booklets are laminated and are in larger print. Each resident receives a booklet and follows along during the presentations given by outreach staff at long-term care and memory facilities. Currently, Outreach Services is in the process of developing several additional educational and engagement kits. These kits will feature patriotic holidays, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, I Love Lucy, and each of the four seasons. Collect vintage and antique items to incorporate into facility programming. These items inspire memories, engage patrons, and invigorate the senses. St. Charles Public Library developed the Attic Memory Wagon. We feature new attic programs every month revolving around three themes, fashion, household appliances and products, and travel in the USA. Recent attic programs include Howard Johnson's, Holiday Inn, Pan American Airlines, Depression Glassware, Fiesta Pottery, Route 66, Texaco and Sinclair Oil, 1950s fashion and jewelry trends, and national parks of the United States. We purchase items from antique and thrift stores, the flea market, and online at Etsy. We developed informational handouts to accompany the programs that feature facts, trivia, and photographs. Favorite patron comments during attic programs include, this takes me to way back when, these bring back great memories, and I used to wear something just like that. A fond memory was when three ladies modeled a blue pillbox hat a style made famous by First Lady Jackie Kennedy in the 1960s. We present attic programs at six facilities each month, which engage 90 seniors. Education and engagement programs. Outreach services provides weekly and bi-weekly programming at several of our facilities. The strong partnerships and collaborative efforts we have with facility staff is key to our, our success. Outreach Services also has a strong partnership with the Alzheimer's Association and has coordinated efforts for their staff to present and provide advice on serving to those afflicted with Alzheimer's or dementia. One thing we learn from the Alzheimer's Association staff is to avoid asking people in this population do you remember? 
for many times they cannot remember and this can create frustration and stress for the individual. Therefore, we incorporate different language into our programs for those with memory issues. For example, in the past we, have made, we may have said, do you remember Doris Day? But now we will say something more like, here are some facts about Doris Day, or we will be talking about Doris Day. In addition, we avoid the term memory kits and prefer to use the term education and engagement for our programming initiatives. All of our programs revolve around education and lifelong learning, and we promote ways to encourage engagement as well. Some of the topics include Walt Disney, Lucille Ball, Shirley Temple, John Philip Sousa, Lawrence Welk, and also other topics such as gardening, current events, and the Olympics. One time we were actually asked to do a program by one of our senior facilities for annual chocolate cupcake day. This was, a ch this was a bit challenging, but turned out to be a fun program with a PowerPoint on famous bakers such as Betty Crocker and Julia Child. We used vintage commercial clips showing popular brands of the 50s and 60s like Pillsbury and Hostess. We were fortunate to find a chef's hat and jacket and educated them with facts about different types of chef's hats and how to properly wear the chef jacket. We passed out props, including the Bisquick box and the Hostess Cupcakes boxes, and a variety of different cupcake flavors. At the end of the program, we provided mini chocolate cupcakes and Hostess chocolate cupcakes. We had about 25 residents attend, and we had a lot of questions at the end of the presentation by the residents. Recently, Outreach Services began one-on-one -on -one programming. Through collaboration with the Life Enrichment Coordinators of the facilities we serve, Outreach Services works with those who may benefit from engagement who are cur currently not being reached by other means. For example, I work with an individual named Moro twice a month on programs designed to meet his area of interest. Italy is one of the topics we chose is Moro would love to go to Italy, but he cannot due to mobility issues. So Outreach Services brings Italy to him. We use coffee table books with large pictures. We share facts about Italy, and we use a laptop and YouTube videos to show YouTube videos from the Italian countryside. I also add YouTube clips incorporating Italian music and musicians such as Andrea Bocelli, as Moro loves opera as well. Following a 2015 Reaching Across Illinois Library System conference, Outreach Services was inspired to launch the community-wide fidget quilt project. Fidget quilts feature in aprons feature zippers, bells, buckles, beads, and other manipulative items to relieve the stress and nervous tension associated with Alzheimer's disease and engage fine motor skills. We partnered with local churches and sewing groups who have craft fidget quilts for our project. This past holiday season, we delivered 50 quilts and aprons to local care and memory care facilities. Outreach will host our next fidget quilt project in December 2019. To learn more about our most recent fidget quilt project, check out the March-April 2018 edition of American Libraries Magazine, where the St. Charles Public Library was featured in the Library Trends article, Community Fabric. And next, Dana will be talking about some of the reading programs that we offer at the St. Charles Public Library Senior Facilities. At some of our facilities, and in an effort to reach more individuals, we began a Reading to Residents program. One individual, in particular, with extreme mobility issues, can rarely leave her room. We choose a book together, and we read for about 20 to 30 minutes each time we visit. We have so much fun discussing the characters afterward. In addition, my coworker facilitates a book discussion at one of our senior facilities using resources from the Talking Book pro Program. At some facilities, we also share short stories, either to a group or an individual from a book called Unlikely Friendships. These short stories focus on unusual animal bonds and how animals, regardless of species, connect, 
nurture, and care for one another. An example of this type of story is Owen and Z, in which a one-year-old hippo calf named Owen was found alone and dehydrated by wildlife rangers after a tsunami in Africa. He was placed in a wildlife sanctuary where he bonded with a male tortoise named Z, who also lived at the sanctuary. And next, Dana will be talking about some of the animal therapy programs that we offer to, at senior facilities in the St. Charles community. Memorable pets are stuffed animals developed with geriatric input and especially designed for people with Alzheimer's and dementia. The stuffed animals look like actual dogs and cats and are soft to touch, providing a feel of comfort. They also have nurturing and therapeutic benefits for those who hold, that, who hold them. We often bring the cats and dogs from memorable pets to memory care, skilled care, assisted living, and we use this as a way to engage with individuals. At one particular facility, Fran, one of the residents, loved Lassie, as she would call him, and would hold Lassie during the entire program. She would ask for Lassie on every visit. In addition, we have had programs on pet heroes in which we incorporated the, the memorable pets. Planning is also currently underway in partnership with our local animal shelter, which will cover pets and shelter animals. We will coordinate an activity allowing seniors to give back to the community by ripping newspapers for the animal cages at our local animal shelter and we will bring in the memorable pets to pass around and hold and encourage conversations about pets they may have had. A few months ago, we partnered with an organization to provide a certified therapy dog to visit with residents at one of our senior care centers. The dog handler brought a large black poodle named Harry and educated a group of residents about the dog. Afterwards, the residents could pet and engage with Harry. Outreach services staff also accompanied the dog handler and Harry to individual rooms to ask if residents would like to visit with the dog. Harry was a huge hit and one resident even followed us along from room to room as they could not seem to get enough of Harry the therapy dog. Our outreach services department provides several music programs at our senior facilities, which we will now showcase to you. Each December, outreach services schedules a holiday sing-along at two care centers library staff and their families volunteer to participate. We create large type booklets that feature the song's words so patrons can join in on the fun. Staff members pass out complimentary jingle bells to residents that they can keep. Carolers sing a variety of religious and secular songs, including the First Noel, Frosty the Snowman, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We sing for 25 minutes and engage 50 residents at each care center. In this program called I've Got Rhythm, we use instruments such as bongos, maracas, egg shakers, and even a triangle. We also provide a handout explaining the history and purpose of the instrument, which is the educational piece, which we read before handing out the instruments to individuals. One person who was attending seemed unengaged as I spoke about the instruments as compared to the rest of the group. I then handed him a maraca to which he took from my hand and he started shaking it vigorously and saying the words extremely loudly from La Bamba. It was so rewarding to see the smile on his face and to hear him actually sing. There may be times, especially in working with people with severe memory loss or dementia, in which you may not be getting a reaction but know you are making a positive impact and you never know to what degree. Our staff have seen so many examples of this. In another situation, I presented a program on Kate Smith, 
One individual in the group was in his wheelchair with his head down and appeared to be sleeping. However, once I started playing a YouTube clip of Kate singing God Bless America, while his head was still down, I could see and hear him singing right along with Kate. Music makes such a huge impact. Outreach Services arranges to have local musicians visit and perform at our care centers. I often schedule to have my flute orchestra play or perform a recital with a pianist at my church. We play a variety of religious, secular, folk, patriotic, and classical songs. A fond memory during a performance was when residents were singing along to the tunes, How Great Thou Art and Amazing Grace. Outreach Services also presents special programs with a theme to align with a holiday or even a request from residents. At Hunt Club, one of our 55 plus senior communities, during our usual lobby stop, we found residents were very interested in programming and actually requested some topics. And in response, Outreach obliged. These programs were extremely well attended. Outreach services coordinate, coordinated with facility staff to post flyers in high traffic areas to get the word out. Last year, Outreach Services hosted a St. Patrick's Day theme celebration at an assisted living facility. I played a selection of Irish hymns on the flute and a colleague's daughter played her saxophone as well as sang a beautiful rendition of Danny Boy. My outreach coworker, Linda Sprainer, made a special leprechaun outfit, read a selection of limericks, and concluded the program by dancing an Irish jig, which she taught herself how to do. Outreach Services put on another special program at Hunt Club to the sock hop theme using a PowerPoint projector and large screen. The presentation included facts on singers from the 50s, such as Johnny Mathis, Buddy Holly, Bill Haley and the Comets, and Bob Aaron. We played popular tunes from these artists from YouTube clips showing the artists performing the popular song. Everyone loved seeing Bobby Darren on the screen singing Mac the Knife as they sang along. We also added information on popular TV shows during the time and incorporated a fun quiz to encourage engagement. My coworker and I even dressed in poodle skirts and saddle shoes, and we danced during the music clips. Outreach services served malts to set the 1950s malt shop theme, and this was a big hit. After the program ended, people wanted to stay for more song requests and share time with library staff. We had 45 people attend. Our 4th of July celebration was similar. Um, again, we added the technology piece, PowerPoint, we had the YouTubes, facts, music, and snacks. In this case, it was ice cream. This was a very fun and engaging program as we sang patriotic tunes. The outreach sisters, staff members Dana, Linda, and Chris, dressed the same in white pants and blue polka dot shirts and performed Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy right along with the Andrew sisters from the YouTube video. Often we end some of our programs with Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America. Everyone seems to love Kate. Our Western Hoedown was another one. We came dressed in overalls, plaid shirts, and straw hats. Linda and I presented the Wild West, which included a PowerPoint on the large screen with information about popular TV Western series, a TV Western quiz, country music singers, including Hank Williams and Patsy Cline. Everyone really enjoyed the vintage YouTube clips, and the group really loved to hear us sing together. 
Where, oh, where are you tonight from Hee Haw? Library staff had as much fun as the residents. Outreach Services received grant funding from the National Network of Libraries of Medicine to purchase technology and lead healthcare training at local senior facilities. We partnered with the Galter Health Sciences Library of the Feinberg School of Medicine at Northwestern University Chicago, who led the training events. Over 50 seniors attended both training sessions. Outreach provided refreshments and fun raffle prizes. Seniors learned how to find reliable and available healthcare information online, how to spot fake healthcare news, and how to use Google safely to find healthcare information. Seniors also learned how to utilize health databases and medical association websites recommended and approved by the Galter Health Sciences Library and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, such as Medline Plus, the Center for Disease Control, and Clinical Trials. The St. Charles Public Library's Outreach Services Department also hosts a couple programs at the library. Outreach hosts senior art programs at the library, where a guest instructor teaches participants to paint a picture from start to finish. We host the art program three to four times a year with a new painting each season. The library purchases all the materials and supplies, including the canvas, paintbrushes, and easels. We play jazz and blues music during the program, such as Michael Buble and Frank Sinatra. Each art program lasts around two hours and accommodates 16 seniors. And each April, the library partners with the St. Charles Park District to host a local senior spelling bee at the library. The bee is open to anyone who is 50 or older. The winner and runner-up of the local bee enter into a regional bee, which then feeds into a statewide senior spelling bee. The statewide senior spelling bee takes place at the Illinois State Fair each August. The 2016 Illinois State Senior Spelling Bee champion was from St. Charles, Illinois. And are there any questions on the programs that we provide to the senior facilities in the St. Charles or at our library? Okay, so if you have any questions, go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat box. We see we have a couple people typing, so. Okay, so we'll start off um, with, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Tamara Hurst, um, and they ask, where do you get your funding to purchase costumes, props, refreshments, etc., for your programs? Uh, we are, um, we're lucky, I said we have, um, our friends of the library are very supportive, um, and we have support friends, and we're also lucky we have um, this, uh, I, uh, um, we have a very generous uh, support from that. Can I add something to that, too? Um, in terms of the costumes, Linda and I actually, like for our poodle skirts, we, I actually went to Goodwill and just bought it and um, purchased a skirt and found a shirt that we had in our closet that matched. Um, and then even our saddle shoes, we both had a pair. So that's how we got some of our costumes. We actually went and one time we bought the matching plaid shirts as well. And sometimes, too, people will actually, um, David has reached out to staff to see if they have any items for some of our particular programs which staff has brought and let us um, lend for, or lent to us for the program. So that's just another way to. For most, for a lot of our Tales and Travels programs, we do email the staff for to get souvenirs and handouts. And we have a lot of, we put it actually, uh, we put it in our social media sometimes and people um, bring us the items as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, we had a couple questions about like funding. Um, so I'm gonna move on to uh, Michelle Anderson. It's asking, does your staff of four cover only senior programs that you've discussed? Um, or yeah, sure. 
others. Um, we have um, we have we each take different facilities that we do programming at. Um, we have volunteers that assist us as well with our programming. Um, but the majority of us, we each take different uh, facilities where we present at, and we do some combined programs as well for the larger programs. Uh, for example, uh, we offer the attic program at one care center on Thursdays and Tuesdays, and we always have uh, two, three staff members when we do the presentations. We always have at least, we always have to confirm that we have a, a, a facility staff member present as well for safety reasons. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Brooke is asking, what is the percentage of time you spend on delivering materials versus programming? Um, we were, when we started, Dana, Linda, and I have been here for about three years. Um, and programming was actually not done in the past. And one thing that we started doing right away was using the outreach module in our Circe Dynex um, Cersei Dynex, which is our ILS. Um, and in the past, the majority of the time uh, was spent writing information down um, in several places. And once we started using our outreach module, it freed up a lot of extra time. It probably cut out about 65% of our workload after we started using the outreach module to the fullest extent. And because after using the outreach module, it tracks our route information, checks out the history, um, that has freed up so much time that we're able to do programming. We're able to do more partnerships and more book swaps. The outreach modules really has helped us really launch programming because of this. And I can add something to that too. Um, you were asking as well how many, how much time is allocated to delivery of books versus how much is programming. Um, it depends too on the population you're working with. So for example, m most of the people I work with, it's almost I would say 80% programming, 20% book delivery. Linda's population is a little different. There's more readers on her end, so I would say she's closer to maybe 60% programming and 40% delivering materials. So I, I hope that helps a little bit. You know, I think um, it, it just depends on the population you're working with, and again, most of the people I work with in particular aren't reading books generally as much, so that's why we're doing the programming so much. Okay, and then um, looks like Ron is asking, how many staff at the senior homes um, help you at your events? How do they help you? What do they do? Um, and kind of do they have to register or do they just show up um, on the day of? Um, for our um, questions for Ron, um, we have usually we always make sure that there is one staff member present at all times. That we do not act as care or nursing care staff. Um, and with that, usually the staff are there just to make sure in case somebody falls or needs some assistance. But we run the programs mostly ourselves. Um, sometimes if there is just one staff member present, uh, they have, we have an activities assistant who is at. Um, the facility helps us pass out materials or handouts, but usually it's all run by us. Um, but we, we require that a staff member is present just to, in, just to make sure if the resident needs something because we do not move residents. We do not help them from their chairs as well. Um, so we always have to have make sure a facility staff member is present, uh, but we actually lead the program by ourselves. Okay. And um, Tamara is asking, can you tell more about the partnership with the Alzheimer's Association? How did you connect with them, and what role do they play? Um, I am, so in the Reaching Across Illinois Library System, uh, I am the co-founder of the Serving Patrons with Tina, the Serving Patrons of Dementia Group, as, as well as my colleague, uh, Tina Williams. Um, and through this group, we have started working with the Alzheimer's Association more. Um, and they come to all of our meetings, and they have really trained us how to work better with the growing senior population, including those with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Um, and they have really um, helped us. For example, as Dana mentioned, I said we do not say when we're talking to a senior, do you remember? We phrase it differently, um, asking a different question to encourage the engagement and conversation. Um, the Alzheimer's Association at our library comes once or once a year to present in the Chicagoland area. 
Um, and one thing a lot of libraries in our area do is that we team up to provide programming from the Alzheimer's Association. In the Chicagoland area, the Alzheimer's Association only comes once a year uh, to a library. So if you team up with several neighboring libraries and make it um, a tri-city event, um, they, you can really market it to all the, all the different libraries and host different programs as well. All right, and um, Michelle is asking, does your library slash outreach also provide services to non-senior community, um, such as daycare, schools, uh, bookmobile stops, et cetera? Our outreach department is strictly seniors. Uh, we do not uh, do youth outreach at all, or our, our preschool outreach. We strictly do senior outreach. So the four of us, our main job is just doing senior outreach. All right, thanks. And um, Brooke is asking, do you coordinate with the Senior Center Activity Directors, or are you acting in place of um, an activity director? Uh, Dana, would you like to ask, answer that one? Yes, we, we coordinate with them. And we have really strong partners, because that, that is a really good question. Um, so for example, I'll give you Rosewood. I work with somebody. She does programming every single day for the seniors and works, you know, diligently to make sure they have programming and get them out of our room, out of their rooms and, and, and activities. I work with her especially on bringing materials for her programs. So in addition to us providing programming, uh, programs twice a month there. So we, we supplement their programming with two special programs from the library a month. And then also I will bring her materials and sometimes I even, um, if they don't have the resources, I could use like our databases to, you know, give them a handout maybe, something I can research for them. So we really work close together and then she'll show you know, for example, a, um, maybe a, like a Frank Sinatra biography or a, a film about Frank Sinatra, and she'll use our materials. The same situation is with Pineview. They have their own activities department that has programs and activities, but we will also supplement theirs with special library programs. So we really work in collaboration with them, and I can tell you they are so grateful for any resources we can help them provide. Wonderful, okay. Um, and Kathleen is asking, does your staff work exclusively on outreach services or are they uh, splitting time between that and other duties in the library? Uh, we are pretty much all strictly outreach services. Um, I do have a couple desk shifts during the week. Um, at the Reader Services desk, which is good because I ordered the large print for all of our library. Um, but we are all mainly strictly outreach services, and this is, this is what our main job is. Okay, and then Ron is asking about the fidget quilts. Do you contact the Alzheimer's facilities and see how many seniors would benefit from them, or do they contact you? Um, and he says, sounds like a great program. Oh, thank you. I says we were we loved the program. The, the, the staff at the facilities were so excited about this. Um, we we talked to a couple of our facilities and they were on board. Um, and we uh, reached out via social media as well as contacted some churches and sewing groups. Um, even a sewing group from Iowa um, recontacted us and reached out. Um, and we, uh, they were very excited. So we had about 50 quilts, and then we just divided them up between uh, the senior facilities and care centers and memory care facilities. Um, and it was a wonderful project, and we had a great time, and we had an all-staff uh, wrapping party where we wrapped for about two hours, and staff members came together just to really contribute uh, to the project. We even gave um, a couple to our local hospital that we partner with, Northwestern Medicine and Del Nor Hospital. We brought a couple to them. Uh, we have a strong partnership with Volunteer Services over there, and they were appreciate, appreciative, and they were going to provide those for um, one of the social workers at the hospital. Wonderful. Um, OK, and then Paula is asking, do you have your outreach kits cataloged um, if yes, do you have any subject keywords used in all records so that they can be easily found? 
um, our educational engagement kits are actually exclusively only used by our outreach department. Um, and so we do not, for our educational engagement kits, we do not have them cataloged. There's only probably about five or six items in each kit. However, um, for our ATTIC program, we do have it cataloged, and we did this by ourselves to keep track of everything. Uh, my one outreach coworker, Linda, spent some time cataloging it to make sure everything is accounted for. We have caregiver kits, too, that are cataloged, and those are different. Those are circulating. Okay, and it looks like we have a couple people typing. Um, give them a few minutes. Okay, so um, Ron is asking for the reading programs. Do you only read short books you can finish, or do you come back and continue reading? Um, reading the book, do your see and do your seniors select the books? Can I? Sure. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So with the one with one individual, and it does depend on the person. With one individual, um, she she actually picks some of the books. She had an idea of who she liked in terms of an author and type and genre type, and we more or less really did it together. We picked out um, a Nora Roberts book. So what what I do is I read. You know, and again, we, we don't have a whole lot of time. We can't read for an hour and a half or anything like that. So we read 20 minutes every time I come visit. Then I'll mark the page. And when I visit the next time, you know, I will continue reading on. And sometimes we recap a little bit, too. So that's how I'll do it with some people. So yes, we do pick the book or pick it together and then read that book and then just continue on. Then there's other people, um, especially more with memory issues, where I read very short stories, mainly about the pet book I mentioned before, like Unlikely Friendships, Dogs is a really good one. And it's a short story, uh, maybe, maybe three pages. And those seem to do really well with um, groups with memory issues, with the, with the shorter stories. All right, and then um, Tamara is asking um, a follow-up to, uh, I think, the kit question. If she asks, if I wanted to make similar kits, um, would you be willing to share what's in them in order to give ideas? Um, well, definitely feel free uh, to reach out to me. Um, uh, if you could show Brianna my email address or I can share it. Um, anybody is, of course, welcome to contact me or Dana, um, and we'd be happy to tell you more about our programs and give you more information. I'd be happy to do that. We'd be happy to do that. Definitely. Um, yeah, and I can include um, your contact information in um, the when we send out the link to the recording. Thank you. Uh, I can put the emails in there. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, does anyone have any final questions that they want to put in the chat box at this point? All right. Um, and just one on um, one last. Oh. It looks like we do have one more question from Ron. Um, so he's asking, what do the seniors do with the artwork? Do they have a pride wall? Do you put pictures on your library site? Uh, no, we don't, but that is actually a really great idea. I, says, yeah, I like that. That's a wonderful idea. I'm going to try it next time. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And then um, I don't know if, if you want to just uh, briefly speak about the handouts that we have linked in the notes section. Yes, I'd be happy to. Um, there is a handout uh, sheet on um, that Brianna uh, put at the top in the notes section. These are handouts of several of our programs. It's in a Google Drive. Um, feel free to access it and use any of the documents. There are copies of our programs. There's a copy of more information about our staff. Um, so feel free to use that in your own programming or reach out to me as well. All right, perfect. Um, so thank you again to uh, both David and Dana for presenting um, on this topic today. And thank you to everyone for attending. Um, like we said, this webinar is recorded. So those who have registered will receive um, a link to the recording once it's processed. And that link will also be available on um, 
our office's uh, page on ALA's e-learning site um, for you to access and share if you'd like to. So um, thanks to everyone again, and have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody, for coming. It was an honor, and I hope we were able to share some information.